Uh, my name is Chandra Wawarundu. I'm a founder of Mentari, Human Trafficking Survivor Empowerment Program in New York. And I also a member of the US Advisory Council on Human Trafficking. I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, and I'm a human being. In 1998, political turbulence and religious persecution happened in my country, Indonesia. I was a financial analyst. So my imagination, if I talk about the United States, United States is full with the goodness. It is an American dream for me because of the power of US dollar. So when I work in the bank, I know exactly that the US dollar control all economic, politic, everything convert to US dollar. So I was so excited when I lose my job, I didn't get my job back. And I think to go to the US for six months seasonal job in the hotel will be perfect. So I went to this employment agency. I paid 3,000 US dollars and I got the job. The excitement, you know, when you are living outside the United States, what we see, all about a good thing, about the pizza, about the sandwich, about the movie. In the movie, they, they show you. One day, the employment agency called and said, this is the time that you have to travel. I got my ticket passport and visa. So the excitement is I will work six months and I will go back to Indonesia for my daughter because of the money is for her college fund. I was smiled. I went to the airport and I flew to New York City. The employment agency promised someone will pick me up and I didn't worry. At the arrival, in the airport, someone has my picture and called me, are you Chandra? And I say, yes, I am. Excited, right? Someone recognized you. And then this person, who is Johnny Wong, told us we will not go to the workplace. My imagination workplace is in Chicago hotel in Chicago that they promised. And he said, you have to stay overnight in New York City. I trusted him because of, he has my picture, he has all my information. So I was conflict. The fact we divided, become two groups and I was with Two girls, about 17 years old, and another one, very young girl, 15 years old. I was the oldest. I was 24 years old, a week before my 25th birthday. He drove us to Seraton Hotel in Flushing, and I was exchanged with a big envelope of money, I thought it was another business, not about me. He told me that I had to go with this man, another man. I moved to another car, another van, and he drove me somewhere else. I was exchanged with another money. I confused. I realized something wasn't right. The last person who had me took me to his house. 
He asked me to stay in the room with two girls. Not long after, he said, Open your clothes. I want to see if you have tattoo. You have a skin problem. And I said, no. Uh-uh, no. No one can see my body. After I refused, he took the gun from his pocket and pointed on my head and I was pushed down from the stair, went to the basement to the car. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't fight because the gun is a symbol of death. And this girl, my daughter's face, is dancing around in my head. That reminded me I have to stay alive. I didn't know with who I deal with. He took me to another place after a five, ten minute drive. He asked me to step down from the car and he rang the bell. A beautiful lady came out and said hi and this man said mama son a new girl i realize if i'm in the situation because of i knew that mama son is a lady who ran the brothel or prostitution i was afraid at the same day on my arrival in the united states i was sold to the traffickers and to the sex buyer. I never deserve to be sex slave. I never deserve to be in this place. But it happened because of someone want to control my life, take away my freedom, force me to do something that I never deserve and I didn't want to do it. I didn't know how many days, I didn't know how many weeks, I didn't know night or day because I was locked inside the house and the disco light is always on. I never see the light, I never see the sunlight. They escort me every midnight, they dress me up like a queen, they took me to the hotel, to the casino, and no one see me. No one recognized if I was a victim. I was forced to do the work. The gun, the hunting knife, always there for me. The baseball bat, always there for me. And I was verbally, sexually, physically abused by my trafficker and the sex buyers. They didn't think I'm a human. My daughter always there, dancing and reminded me that I have to go back home. I have a faith that one day I will see the light. I will meet her again. And I talk to the girls in that place that I want to run away. Back in the daytime, I met another lady in the brothel that he told, she told me, keep this phone number. When you paid off the debt, you can call this person and this person will help you to get the job what you want, in the hotel, in the bank, anywhere, he can help you. The fact my trafficker put a debt bondage on my body, a debt manipulation, I supposed to get 30,000 US dollar, but the fact my trafficker told me that I had to pay him 30,000 US dollar deducted from the sex buyer who bought my body. One customer will deduct $100. How many people that I have to serve to pay off the debt that I never
suddenly, I walked to the bathroom and I saw a small little window. I climbed to the sink and up to the small window and I looked from the window that it is so high. It was second floor bathroom window. But I was a Girl Scout. So I knew that how to open that window. I stepped down. I went to the kitchen. But I couldn't find screwdriver. I couldn't find knife or anything. So what I used spoon and fork to open that window. And I did it. I told my story and I will keep telling my story because I want to change. By telling the story I believe, people will believe that trafficking happened and I will make a change how we see this crime.